Okay, so before we begin 9.5, let's just take a look at uh, 9.4 material again. Uh, this might look a little bit different. We're asked to find the zeros of the given functions. Uh, and to find the zeros of the functions, we will talk about this more in chapter 10. But to find the zeros of the functions, you just substitute 0 for y, because these are our zeros where our y value is 0. And then we um, solve for x, like what we saw in 9.4. So if we're looking at this example here, y equals x plus 8 times x minus 6, uh, we can just substitute 0 in for y. So 0 equals x plus 8, everything else can say the same, times x minus 6. And then if you recall from yesterday, um, we just can set up x plus 8 equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0, so then x has to be negative 8, or x has to be 6. So either one of these x values would give you a 0 of the function. Um, same game down here, we'll just set 0 equals uh, all the pieces on the right. So 0 equals 3x plus 5 times 2x minus 4. Now from here we do the exact same thing, so we split it up, 3x plus 5 equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0. Solve this for x, so 3x equals negative 5, x is negative 5 over 3. On the right we'll have 2x equals 1, so x is just 1 half. So this is a review of 9.4, and 9.5 deals with how do we get things to look like this, where we have two binomials uh, multiplied by each other, so they're easier to solve. And we call that process factoring. And we saw a little bit of factoring when we just factored a monomial in 9.4, but now we're going to look at something like this, where we can undo foiling. So if we start with a trinomial such as x squared plus 2x minus 15, how could we factor that and get back to here where we have two binomials being multiplied uh, by each other? So that's what 9.5 deals with because solving this by itself is very difficult, but once it's factored, solving this can be fairly simple. So to look at this idea, let's go back to when we learned how to FOIL. Uh, we visually represented this by finding the area of a rectangle. Here we would find the area of a rectangle with sides x plus 1 and x plus 5. We saw that the area of the entire thing was the sum of the pieces, so x squared plus 6x plus 5. This is what we saw when we were learning how to FOIL. But now to go backwards, we need to ask, where do the pieces of our final answer when we have it FOILed, where do those come from? Well. The 6x in the middle comes from adding the terms from the inside and the outside. 5x plus x gives us 6x. x squared comes from the first term. x times x is x squared. And the 5 comes from the last terms. 5 times 1 is 5. So we're going to use that exact same idea to go from a trinomial to its factored form. So here's how we do this in general. We're going to undo foiling by deciding what two numbers multiply to give you the last term, and at the same time add to give you the middle term. And if you don't see an option right away, you can always make a table of all the numbers that multiply to the last term. Let's look at how this works. Here we have x squared plus 10x plus 16. We want two numbers that multiply to 16 and at the same time add to 10. Now you might see it right away. But what this means where it says, if you don't see an option right away, make a table, is this. So to make 16, we could do 1 times 16. That works, but 1 plus 16 is 17, which is not 10. We could do 4 times 4, but 4 plus 4 is 8. So that's not going to work either. Uh, the last option would be 8 times 2. 8 times 2 is 16, but you'll notice 8 plus 2 is 10. So we're going to use 8 and 2. 
So what I mean when I say we're going to use 8 and 2 is we can just say that x squared plus 10x plus 16 is just x plus 8 times x plus 2. And we're done. This is the factored form of x squared plus 10x plus 16. What's nice is you can always check your work by foiling and going backwards. Let's look at another one. Maybe get a little more complicated. Now we have a negative x squared minus 5x plus 4. What two numbers multiply to positive 4 but add to negative 5? Well, now we have a negative. Uh, what we know about negative numbers is if you multiply a negative times a positive, you get a negative number. But if you multiply a negative times a negative, you're going to get a positive number. So to get 4, we're looking at our table. You could do 4 times 1. But that adds to positive 5. You could do 2 times 2, but that adds to positive 4. But you could also do negative 4 times negative 1, which if we're looking here, negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, and negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5. So our factored form is actually just x minus 4 times x minus so you can have negative numbers or any combination of a positive number and a negative number. So you have to try out um, the different options. Once again, if you see two answers right away and you just know that those two numbers multiply to the last term but add to the middle term, you do not need to make this table. But this table is a really nice way to organize your thought process. So why don't you go ahead and try number three on your own uh, right now. Did you get x minus 9 times x plus 2? Because you should have. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, but negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. We can do number 4 together. We'll make the table this time. x squared minus 2x minus 8. What two numbers multiply to negative 8 but add to negative 2? Well, to make negative 8, you could do negative 8 and 1, but that would give you negative 7 if you added. You could do negative 4 and 2. Oh, look at that. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So we are in business. x minus 4 times x plus 2. We are good to go. So you're just asking what two numbers multiply to your last term but add to your second term. Um, I said on that second slide that not every trinomial is going to factor. So for now we're just going to let those be. We're going to learn a method to solve these. This should be x squared. We'll find a method to solve these uh, in chapter 10. But for now we're just going to leave these be. Not everything can factor. So now if we're not just asked to simplify and factor, we're actually asked to actually solve. We can do that the same way. We're just combining what we learned um, in this section 9.5 as well with 9.4. So we're asked to solve x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. We first need to factor this. So you're asking what two numbers multiply to 6 but add to 5. Um, look at a table. You could do 6 and 1. That would add to 7. You could do 2 times 3. And look at that, 2 plus 3 is 5. So we have x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. And then we break this up, x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. So x has to be equal to negative 2, or x has to be equal to negative 3. Just to show us, we can plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Plus 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Plus 6 gets us back to 0. And you'd find that the same thing would work with x equals negative 3. So you can always check your work for these. Number 6 looks a little different. The issue here is it's not written in standard form. We have negative x plus x squared equals 56. So we want to first write all of this in standard form to make it easier to factor. 
I'm going to rearrange the x squared and the negative x. All I did was flip these two things around. Now I'm going to subtract 56 from both sides, set it equal to 0. So I just brought the 56 over and I rearranged these two things. Now we're factoring this. What two numbers multiply to negative 56 but add to negative 1? Uh, negative 8 and 7 would work in this case. I'm going to tell you right now, the more factoring you do, the faster and easier it becomes, and eventually you won't even be needing to make these tables. You're just going to see things and, and react. So x minus 8 times x plus 7 equals 0, so we know that x has to be equal to 8, x has to be equal to negative 7. I skipped the step where I wrote out x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0, so in this case x minus 8 equals 0 or x plus 7 equals 0, because I know for this piece to be 0, x would have to be 8. <clears throat> For this piece to be 0, x would have to be negative 7. So here are our two answers for negative x plus x squared equals 56. Okay, last one, a little more complicated. How could we solve uh, when problems look really weird like this? You can think about that in your head. <clears throat> uh, the answer would be, first we need to get it in standard form. So we might need to distribute this q. So we'd have q squared plus 34q minus 10 equals 62. Now we're going to want to subtract 62. So q squared plus 34q minus uh, 72 equals 0. Now you're asking the question, what two numbers multiply to negative 72 but add to positive 34? Uh, we could go through the list. So negative 72, you could have negative 72 and 1. You could have negative 36 and 2. Oh, look at that. Negative 36 plus 2 gets us negative 34. So we're close, we just need to have negative 2, positive 36, because now negative 2 plus 36 is positive 34. So the factored form is q minus 2 times q plus 36 equals 0. So to solve, q is equal to 2, or q is equal to negative 36. So first write it in standard form, and then you're just factoring. Once again, just to remember, this is the big takeaway from 9.5. To factor, you're asking what two numbers multiply to give you the last term, but add to give you the middle term. What two numbers multiply to 16, add to 10. Multiply to 4, add to negative 5. And from there on, you're home free. So that would conclude um, section 9.5.